Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the AS Biology 9700, this is chapter 9. And this is the second video on gas exchange and smoking. And this is only covers the smoking part of this chapter, which is only in the 2021 syllabus. Please do not uh, go through this video if you are doing the 2022 syllabus. So AS Biology 9700. Now, in this syllabus, we have smoking is one of the major avoidable risk factors of chronic life-threatening diseases of the gas exchange and circulatory system. Two systems are involved in this. Now, the only two points we need to discuss. Describe the effects of tar and carcinogens in tobacco smoke on the gas exchange system. So, tar and carcinogens only act on the gas exchange system. With reference to lung cancer and COPD. Now what is COPD? COPD is chronic, chronic obstructive, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You know pulmonary is something to do with the lungs. Like a person who treats lung diseases called pulmonologist. So pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, anything to do with the lungs. So what we need to be doing in this video is just about these two components of the syllabus which we need to cover. Now coming to the main components of cigarette smoke, we have three things which we need to talk about. Number one, tar, which contains carcinogens. So tar contains a lot of carcinogens. Now what is carcinogen? Carcinogen is a cancer causing compounds. Cancer causing compounds. C, C, C. Cancer causing compounds. Carcinogens. So, second one is carbon monoxide and third one is nicotine. In general, tar and carcinogens damage the gas exchange system. So, both of these are going to damage the gas exchange system and carbon monoxide and nicotine these damage the cardiovascular system which is the heart and different arteries and veins so this only damaging the gas exchange system while the carbon monoxide and nicotine damaging the cardiovascular system so tar is a mixture of compounds that settles on the lining of the airways in the lungs and stimulates a series of changes that may lead to obstructive lung disease and lung cancer. Carcinogens are cancer causing compounds. These cause mutations for the genes, mutations in the genes that control cell division. And that mutation is going to then result in uncontrolled cell division and that results in cancer. You see there is some protein which controls cell division. Now if something goes wrong with that protein, well then you're going to get uncontrolled cell division. Now let's look at this word COPD. COPD means chronic. Chronic means long term. He is a chronic late comer to school. That means he comes late very often, at least three or four times a week. Chronic, long term. The opposite of that is acute, short term. I have acute respiratory infection. For the last three, four days, I have acute infection. So acute and chronic are two English words that we need to understand the meaning of it. Chronic means long term and acute means short term. This is called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and the short is COPD. Now the diseases which come under these are asthma, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So we're going to discuss these in a little more detail. Asthma, I'm not going to discuss this a lot because this is not so much that we want to talk about. But we're going to discuss chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Now let's look at the first disease which we talked about is the chronic bronchitis. Goblet cells in mucus glands secrete more mucus. Why? Because they are being irritated by all the chemicals which are present in the cigarette smoke. Then the tar paralyzes the cilia. The sweeping action of the cilia is reduced. So now no more the mucus is being moved up the trachea and the mucus doesn't enter the throat and doesn't enter the stomach because that's how it went. 
so now the cilia the sweeping action of the cilia is also not taking place so the mucus is going to collect in the bronchioles and it will become obstructed similarly the mucus contains all the dirt the dust particles the bacteria and the viruses and these will now collect and block the bronchioles now this of course results in smoker's cough which is an attempt to move the mucus up the airways and with the time the damaged epithelia are replaced by scar tissue and the smooth muscle surrounding the bronchioles and bronchi become thicker and this thickening of the airway causes them to narrow and make it difficult to breathe so chronic bronchitis goblet cell mucus gland more mucus cilia paralyzed all this mucus collecting in the bronchioles and this resulting in damage and of course the person has a smoker's cough which means that he is going to bring in the morning bring up a lot of phlegm phlegm is the yellowish sticky mucus with all the dust and everything sticking to it and that is brought up in the cough early in the morning because as he gets up in the morning he's going to bring all this up then infections might set in such as pneumonia pneumonia is an infection of the lungs because of this uh, collected or accumulated mucus now this infection of the lungs is called uh, pneumonia and the spelling should be clear to everybody the p is silent and this is causing is because of the lining becoming inflamed and this is going to result in narrowing the airways and this is the word we use here is chronic bronchitis now the sufferers of chronic bronchitis have a very severe cough and they produce large quantities of phlegm phlegm in urdu as we say is the balgam so the phlegm is what phlegm is a mixture of the mucus uh, the bacteria and the white blood cells which have actually been uh, which uh, which die in the process of trying to engulf and digest these bacteria and the dust particles so phlegm mucus bacteria and white blood cells now we come to the second disease which is called emphysema now in emphysema what happens is that the inflammation of the constantly infected lungs causes phagocytes you can see this is a phagocyte phagocytes have the lobe nucleus so the phagocytes leave the blood and line the airways they leave the blood that lines the airways so this is the alveolar and uh, this is the alveolus wall which i've drawn in black and this is the capillary wall which i've drawn in red i've drawn it a little larger but this is just a diagrammatic view of it so the phagocytes leave the blood and phagocytes are white blood cells that remove bacteria from the body now to reach the lining of the lungs from the capillaries phagocytes release the protein digesting enzyme elastase so for the phagocyte to come out of the capillary and enter the and enter and start to engulf the bacteria which are present inside now this enzyme elastase is released but this enzyme has another very damaging effect it destroys the elastin in the walls of the alveoli so elastin in the walls of the alveoli so making pathway for the phagocytes to reach the surface and remove the bacteria so when the elastin is destroyed well what is going to be lost the stretch and recoil of the alveoli will be lost elastin the destruction of the elastin the elastin is very important because the elastin lines these alveoli but when this elastin is destroyed by the enzyme elastase so the elastic the stretch and recoil is lost because usually what happens the alveoli now when the elastin is lost the alveoli do not stretch and recoil when we are breathing in and out as a result the bronchioles collapse during expiration trapping air in the alveoli which often burst so large spaces appear where the alveoli have burst and this reduces the surface area for gas exchange so we had a whole lot of alveoli say about 6 of them and now as these weakened alveoli burst what is going to happen 
we're going to have less surface area for gas exchange. Now it's becoming this one large space. So less surface area. This reduces the surface area for gas exchange. The number of capillaries also decreases. So less oxygen is absorbed into the blood and this condition is called emphysema. Now in this diagram you can see a diagram of how normally what happens is when inspiration takes place there is stretch and the alveoli stretch and then they recoil back. So they stretch out and then they go back in so they recoil. So the elastic fibers you can see the elastic fibers and the elastic fibers which are labeled here you can see those alveolus elastic fibers. Now what happens in emphysema A is the healthy alveoli partially deflate after breathing out due to the recoil of the elastin fibers. In the B diagram which is this one phagocytes from the blood make pathways through alveolar walls by digesting elastin and after many years of this destruction the alveoli do not deflate very much. So they, they have stretched but then they don't recoil back a lot. So the stretch remain in that position and they deflate just a little bit. So this is going to result in less air being refreshed and this results in a lot of problems and these people suffer from extreme breathlessness. So emphysema the main is breathlessness. These people cannot walk a few steps. It will be difficult to go to the bathroom even. And then they'll have to be ultimately put on oxygen cylinders. Now, looking at emphysema, as I talked about the breathlessness, there's something important that I need to discuss with you. As the disease progresses, the blood vessels in the lungs become more resistant to the flow of blood. Why? Because there's so much of alveolar damage to the wall of the alveolus and the capillary surrounding, surrounding it. To compensate for this increased resistance, the blood pressure in the pulmonary artery increases. And over time, the right side of the heart enlarges. Why? Because you have to understand from the right side, from the right ventricle arises the pulmonary artery. So if the pressure in the pulmonary artery increases, the right ventricle has to work more. If the right ventricle has to work more, you see it arises from here, from the right ventricle. So the right ventricle has to work more. So the right ventricle becomes thicker, the wall becomes thicker. And that's not a very good thing because ultimately this person is going to die of right-sided heart failure. Now, as lung function deteriorates, wheezing occurs and breathlessness becomes progressively worse. And it may become so bad that some people cannot get out of bed. And people with severe emphysema, people with severe emphysema often need a continuous supply of oxygen through a face mask to stay alive. And this is of course very visible. If you look at slides of the lungs, you can see the destruction of the alveoli. Now this is a slide, is a photomicrograph of a normal lung tissue, this one. And B is the photomicrograph of lung tissue from a person with emphysema, showing large spaces where there should be many tiny alveoli. So look at this area and look at these large spaces. So this is what I want you to understand about emphysema in which the person suffers from breathlessness. Please remember there is no cough in this. It's breathlessness which is the main thing which is worrying the patient. Now let's talk about the last disease that we talk about is lung cancer. Now lung cancer, tar and tobacco smoke contain several substances that are carcinogens. These react directly or via breakdown products with DNA and epithelial cells to produce mutations. So mutations are a change in the DNA of these cells. And this results in uncontrolled cell division and that results in a mass of cells. And these mass of cells is called the tumor. Now this tumor is called malignant. It is called malignant if some of its cells can break off and spread to other organs. When it spreads to other organs it is called metastasis. Now this lung cancer takes 20 to 30 years to develop and most of the growth of a tumor occurs before there are any symptoms and the most common symptom of lung cancer is coughing up blood as a result of tissue damage. People with lung cancer may also have chest pain 
and find it difficult to breathe. But how do we diagnose this? Tumors in the lungs, such as uh, lung cancer, is diagnosed by three methods. Number one, we do a bronchoscopy, in which we use an endoscope to allow a direct view of the lining of the bronchi. And you have to anesthetize the patient and you have to go with the help of this instrument and go and look inside and get a mass and let get a little piece for the biopsy. Or we can do, this is called bronchoscopy. The second one is a chest x-ray and the third is a CT scan by which we can do a diagnosis and find out if the person has lung cancer or not. But by the time most lung cancers are discovered, they are well advanced and treatment involves surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. If the cancer is small and in one lung, then either a part or all of the lung is removed. However, metastasis has usually happened by the time of the diagnosis. So if there are secondary tumors, if there are secondary tumors in some other part of the body, in some other organ, then we are not going to really be doing much help because we cannot stop the spread of it. So this is why smoking is linked to many different cancers. Chemotherapy with anti-cancer drugs or radiotherapy with x-rays another form of radiation is used may might help the patient but it is not some it is not something which we are very positive about it doesn't help a lot uh, we come to the last topic which is the short term effects on the cardiovascular system now the two components of tobacco smoke that cause short term effects on the cardiovascular system are nicotine and carbon monoxide now let's look at nicotine first Nicotine is a drug in the tobacco. It is absorbed very readily, very quickly absorbed and travels to the brain within a few seconds. Absorbed where? Absorbed in the alveola. That's where the smoke goes in. And uh, it stimulates the nervous system to reduce the diameter of arterioles. Now, what is that called? That's called vasoconstriction. So the muscles in the wall of the arterioles contract and it reduces the diameter of the arterioles. And it also causes the release of the hormone adrenaline. You remember adrenal gland on top of the kidneys. That is stimulated to release adrenaline. As a result, the heart rate and the blood pressure increases. So heart rate increases, blood pressure increases. That's not very good. And there is a decrease in blood supply to the extremities of the body such as the hands and the feet. So your hands and feet feel cold. And this reduces their supply of oxygen. Also nicotine increases the risk of blood clotting. Now nicotine is highly addictive. And that is the biggest problem that we face. Highly addictive drug that influences reward centers in the brain. And it stimulates nerve endings in the brain to release the happy substance dopamine which is associated with reinforcing pleasurable experience and that's why it's become it's very hard it's very difficult to give up smoking because that good feeling that you have is highly addictive so these are the short-term effects of nicotine coming uh, to the last topic which is carbon monoxide now carbon monoxide diffuses you see carbon monoxide again would be in the cigarette smoke so carbon monoxide diffuses across the walls of the alveoli and into the blood in the lungs. It diffuses into red blood cells where it combines with hemoglobin to form the stable compound carboxyhemoglobin. Please do not mix this with up with carbaminohemoglobin. That's part of the chapter on transport in mammals. So carboxyhemoglobin is a stable compound. That means this red blood cell now which has carboxyhemoglobin is not going to transport oxygen for you. So if you have 100 million red blood cells, 10 million of them are lost. 5 to 10% less oxygen is going to be transported. So this means that hemoglobin does not become fully oxygenated and 10% less oxygen is reaching the body cells. So less oxygen is supplied to the heart muscle putting a strain on it, especially when the heart rate increases during exercise. And also carbon monoxide damages the lining of the arteries. Now these short term effects are easily reversible in people who have not smoked for very long. 
but long term smokers put the health of their cardiovascular system at risk risk and this of course damages the wall of the arteries this may lead to the build up of fatty tissues and the reduction of blood flow now this is going to this is going to happen in the coronary arteries and the person is going to start having coronary heart disease chd coronary heart disease and stroke in stroke is when you have a burst or a blocked artery in the brain and then you have paralysis of one side of the body now these are responsible for 20% of all deaths worldwide and up to 50% of deaths in developed countries uh that finishes this uh, chapter on smoking and please remember this is part of the chapter 9 which is gas exchange and smoking and this is only for the 2021 syllabus please students who are taking the exam in 2022 need not study this chapter that ends this chapter and i think i've completed the entire as uh, biology 11 chapters and thank you for subscribing to my channel and thank you for uh, watching these videos and i hope you can go through the paper 2 and the paper 1 questions and uh, i hope these videos help you in understanding this chapter better thank you very much